Hey y'all, I'm back again with another Pokemon challenge video. Pokemon Red with only Poliwag was actually pretty easy by comparison. So this time, in honor of my new puppy Bowser, I wanted to see if I could beat Pokemon Red using only one Growlithe. As usual, the rules are I can only use Growlithe in battle, and I can't use any items in battle. By the way, if you like this kind of content and want to see more, be sure to subscribe and check out more of the videos on my channel. Growlithe has some pretty mediocre stats, and its move pool is pretty limited as well. By both level up and TM, it only really gets normal and fire type moves, although it does get access to Dig, which is one of the strongest moves in the game. Who knows, maybe we'll even teach Growlithe Dragon Rage, because why not? Not a move we ever get to use. Off of Professor Oak's lab, I used the Universal Pokemon Randomizer to replace Charmander with Growlithe. That way, our rival will pick Squirtle. By the time we get to the end of the game, Bubs will have a Blastoise, which is bulky as all hell. Plus, it knows Hydro Pump, which will be really difficult for Growlithe to handle. I nicknamed my Growlithe Bowser, and hopefully, Growlithe will need less training than the real Bowser. Growlithe only starts off with Bite and Roar, but even so, that's more than enough to beat the rival Bubs. Sadly though, Growlithe won't learn another move until Ember at level 18. So after Bubs, we beat him a second time and then go straight for Brock at the Pewter City Gym. But when we get there at level 10, it's just not possible. We get obliterated until we train Growlithe up to level 17, and I leave just enough experience so that when we knock out Geodude, we'll hit level 18 and learn Ember. After that, our decent special stat slams Brox's Onyx, and this battle becomes incredibly easy since his Pokemon have really awful special. It took forever to grind up to level 17 on Kakuna and Metapod in the forest, and sadly, at this point, it doesn't get much easier. After passing through Mount Moon, we take on our rival Bubs in Cerulean City. Bite is still pretty strong, and the flinches are super great, but we do have to reset multiple times because of Pudgeotto using Sand Attack. After that, though, all of Bubs' Pokemon go down pretty easily except for Squirtle. We take big damage from Water Gun, but Bite is able to clutch out a win, even if it is just with a sliver of HP left. After that battle, I went to take on Misty, but she's just way too tough at that point. So instead, I head out to Vermilion City to take on the rival Bubs at the SSN. Along the way, I taught Growlithe the TM for Dig. Dig is a two-turn move, and that sucks. But the good news is that it's the same strength as Earthquake. I have to use Ember on Pudgeotto because it's a flying type, but the rest of Bubs' Pokemon, including the Wartortle, go down in two digs or less. Well, now that that's taken care of, there's nothing left to do but trek back to Cerulean City and take on the gym leader, Misty. At this point, we're level 26, but even so, her Starmie is just too strong. But we've got some tricks up our sleeves. Body Slam has a high chance to paralyze and we get a paralysis on the Starmie. We could just level up to make Dig a two hit KO, but I'd rather use something like Body Slam than just over level to solve problems. All in all, we take those. Now it's time to take on Lieutenant Surge, and this battle gets over pretty quickly. We're already pretty highly leveled, and Dig is very strong. Plus, Surge's Pokemon have pretty whack defense, so they all go down in just one hit. It's crazy to go from a slog, like beating Misty, to a complete massacre, like Lieutenant Surge. Speaking of massacres and disembodied spirits, it's time to take on the rival bubs once again in the Pokemon Tower in Lavender Town. This battle is basically the same as the one on the SSN, except Bubs' Pokemon are just a little bit stronger. We have ourselves a little Highlander moment with his Growlithe, because there can only be one. Execute often puts us to sleep and is just all around annoying to deal with, but it goes pretty smoothly anyways and we're able to get the job done and move along. I walk my dog straight to the Celadon City Gym and take on Erica. Her Pokemon are all grass types, so this should be easy, right? Wrong! Growlithe only has Ember, and our special isn't all that great, so we don't do that much damage. In fact, I often use Dig instead. Her Pokemon get plenty of chances to attack, and put us to sleep, and just be a pain in general. I actually lost this one a couple times, before Growlithe got its act together, and actually won. After Erica, we head to the Rocket Game Corner to take on Giovanni. His Rock-type Pokemon take big damage from Dig, but Kangaskhan actually poses a problem. We get down to pretty low health, and we're powering up its rage, but right as Kangaskhan is about to knock us out, we snag a sneaky critical hit to win the battle. 
Once again, I would like to invoke Ash Ketchum Claws and say, we take those. The Fuchsia City Gym is up next, and Koga is no slouch. His poison Pokemon are all weak to dig, but even so, this one is really, really tough. I have to try this battle many times, mostly because of Muck using Minimize to raise evasion while we're digging underground. On this battle, we get to the Weezing, which is able to survive our dig and hit us pretty hard with Sludge in return. We even get poisoned, and it all looks over until Weezing clicks self-destruct while we're digging underground. We take those too, so Ash Ketchum Claws number three in this one. After that, we make our way to take on the rival bubs at the Sylph Company. This battle also takes many attempts. Like trying to teach a puppy to sit, it doesn't always work on the first try, but eventually Growlithe gets it. We use agility to boost our speed, otherwise Alakazam will destroy us with Psychic, plus this badge boosts our attack and defense as well. Most of his Pokemon aren't an issue, but Blastoise is a huge wall. It randomly picks between Water Gun and Withdrawal, and Withdrawal's great because it won't take damage, but it also made it harder to win. We snagged a Sneaky Paralysis on this one, so, well, you know, we take those. We always take those. Unlike last time, Giovanni here is a total joke. Agility gives us badge boost to attack, and Dig was already super strong against his entire team. So we go from doing 90% with Dig to a clean one-hit KO. I have to keep Bowser in real life from digging up the yard, but Growlithe in this game digging is a very good thing for us. Next up is Sabrina, and unlike Giovanni, this one is pretty tough. Kadabra outspeeds and often either confuses us with Psybeam or straight up crits to knock us out. Mr. Mime doesn't do all that much, but Venomoth often hits us with Stun Spore, and then after the speed drop from Paralysis, Alakazam just outspeeds and knocks us out. We have to do this one a couple times until Venomoth goes for Poison Powder, and also Alakazam uses Psywave and Reflect rather than using any of its good moves. I swear that's the fourth Ash Ketchum clause of this run, and like I keep saying, we take those. After Sabrina, we take on Blaine at the Cinnabar Island Gym, and his Fire-type Pokemon are all weak to dig, although his Growlithe crits us with Takedown as we're trying to badge boost with Agility, so not a good start. This might have been a problem for when the Arcanine comes out, since its Takedown can actually do decent damage, even through our defense boost, but when it does finally come out, it instead goes for Roar. You gotta love Blaine's awful AI, and say it with me y'all, we take those. Now it's time for the final gym battle with the Viridian City gym leader Giovanni. We go for agility to make sure we outspeed the Duck Trio, which is the only real threat to our little baby Bowser. Dig does big damage to all of his Pokemon, although we go for Body Slam on Duck Trio because it will go for Dig, and since we're faster it will dodge our Dig and then knock us out in return with its Dig. Once we get to ride on though, it's all over. Giovanni's AI makes him go for Fissure because it's a ground type move and we're weak to ground, but we're faster so we'll always fail. I finish off this battle by spamming Ember, just to style on Ride On. It's the first battle in a while we didn't invoke Ash Ketchum Claws. The fight with the rival bubs afterwards is a problem just like the last time. Like before, most of his Pokemon aren't really a problem, except of course for the Blastoise. And like before, it's super bulky and randomly chooses between its two water moves. However, this time instead of Water Gun, it instead knows Hydro Pump, which is triple the strength. So unless we're at full health, with badge boost to special, we're not going to survive a Hydro Pump. Luckily though, in this attempt, Bubs only wanted his Blastoise to go for withdrawal, so Bowser was able to body slam its way to victory. Now it's time to take on the Elite Four, and normally I'd show you the stats, but I forgot to get a screenshot, so let's just jump right into it. I replaced Body Slam with Mimic, because we're going to need it, and you'll see why very soon. Lorelai is up first, and right away, she's a problem. We have to damage her Dugong to bait her to go for rest. While Dugong is asleep, we can go for agility to badge boost our stats. We need to be able to two-hit KO the Cloister while also surviving one round of Clamp. Then after that, Slowbro comes out, and this is where we use Mimic to copy Amnesia. With Amnesia, we can maximize our special stat, which we need to do in order to beat the Lapras. With the right special boost, we can do just enough damage to the Lapras to force Lorelei to use a Super Potion, and then we can knock it out the next turn without having taken any damage from it. Otherwise, it goes for Hydro Pump, and if it crits, it will knock us out. This is a tough battle that often requires resetting, because Cloyster's Clamp is hard to deal with. But all in all, 
it's not too bad, because you win about half of the time. After Lorelei, up next is Bruno. He's an incredibly consistent battle, and not really much of a challenge. He leads off with Onyx, and the best case scenario is that it will lock itself into Rage. Then we can set up Agility, and also use Mimic to copy Harden from the Onyx. With maximized defense and 9 additional badge boosts from all of the moves, our special is so high that we can one-hit KO all of his Pokemon with Flamethrower. His Onyx and Machamp actually survive our Flamethrower, but that's only because we got a critical hit, which ignores our badge boost. Even so, we slam Bruno into the tatami floor mats in his tiny little room. So, I guess, go little pupper, go! Next up is Agatha and her aggravating ghost Pokemon. Before the battle, I use a rare candy to reset our experience to prevent us from leveling up during the battle and losing our badge boost. You'll notice that this happens a lot during the run, where I get to the end of an important battle, and that's when Growlithe levels up. And that's by design. Well, right away, we need an agility to be faster than her Gengar, because we want to avoid Hypnosis and Confuse Ray. Dig is really strong here because all of her Pokemon are poison types, but she switches into Golbat, which we have to damage with Flamethrower because of its flying typing. And unfortunately, Golbat knows Haze, and it uses that to remove all of our boosts, so we have to set up agility again. After that, it's just a matter of digging our way to victory. Her last Gengar does poison us with Toxic, which racks up some pretty decent damage because of the extra turns required to use Dig. But in the end, this one's pretty easy, even if it is really annoying. But I guess that's kind of the theme of this run. As with all puppies, they're a lot of work at first, but in the end, they're totally worth it and very enjoyable. Well, now it's time for the last Elite Four member, Lance, and this battle for the longest time was a complete roadblock, because Gyarados outspeeds Growlithe, and its Hydro Pump is always a one-hit KO. Gyarados is immune to Dig, and Flamethrower does basically no damage, and at this point I'm not really sure what to do, so I make a tough decision here and decide to replace Mimic with Double Team. There's only one way to win this battle. Gyarados has to miss its first Hydro Pump as we go for Double Team. The badge boost to speed from Double Team lets us outspeed and go for more Double Teams, and I'm not super thrilled about it, but we'd have to set up 5 badge boosts before we can even survive a Hydro Pump, so I don't really have a choice other than over leveling, which I don't want to do. Even with full evasion boost, we have to take so many turns setting up that more often than not, Gyarados is still able to hit two Hydro Pumps to knock us out. And in fact, even while using this strategy, it took me over 100 attempts to get a successful win. Because remember, this is just Gyarados and the other Pokemon can still attack us. After the absolute odyssey of trying to beat Lance, it's time to take on the champion, but I'll just skip to the end here and say that it's just not possible right now. Even with Double Team, I just couldn't win this battle. Blastoise is too strong. So there's only one solution. Going to go level up and try once again. I gain four additional levels and go take on the Elite Four using the same strategies as before. And then I get back to the champion. Once we beat Lance, I've replaced Double Team with Toxic, which normally I wouldn't even consider using. However, I noticed when I battled Agatha that using multi-turn Dig while badly poisoned really racked up damage on Growlithe. So I figured we could do the same thing to Bubs' Pokemon. It's cool to take the downside of a move like Dig and use it to our advantage. Anyways, Pidgeot is up first, and you can see right away just how powerful Toxic is. We use it on Pidgeot, and when it goes for Sky Attack, another two turn move, we go for Dig to dodge. Then Pidgeot uses Mirror Move to also go for Dig, and this continues until Pidgeot knocks itself out without Growlithe ever attacking. Even better, it goes down while we're still in the middle of a Dig. So when Alakazam comes out, we hit it with a one turn Dig, which is essentially an Earthquake. We knock out Alakazam, and once Rhydon comes out, it's time for the real strategy. We immediately Toxic Rhydon and set up our agilities, and we are purposely trying to not attack Rhydon. Hopefully, in the meantime, it hits us with Leer and Tail Whip, and then goes down to Toxic Damage without actually attacking us. The defense drops will badge boost our attack and special, which we need to take on the Blastoise. Finally, it's time to take on the Blastoise. We immediately use Toxic as it goes for Withdrawal. Then we use Dig, not only for damage, but to also dodge Hydro Pumps. This works like a charm, we rack up toxic damage, and we're finally able to knock out Blastoise, winning the challenge. And with that, it's all over! Growlithe was a lot of fun, but a real challenge at the very end, even forcing us to resort to some pretty toxic strategies. Horrible puns aside, I want to thank you for making it to the end of this video. These videos are a lot of fun, but also a lot of work, so I really do appreciate it. There's a playlist on my channel where you can find the rest of my Pokemon Challenge videos if you want to check those out as well. There's 20 others. 
Anyways, if you like this kind of content, be sure to subscribe and enable notifications so you'll know right away the next time one of these episodes is uploaded. And let me know in the comments what other Pokemon you want to see, and I'll probably do it next. Next up is beating Pokemon Red with only one Machop. I'm going to go play with my puppy now, so until next time, 